Hello everyone. I think many people watching have eaten such a Nutella and go. We open up the pack and we see crispy sticks that need to be dipped in chocolate paste. Pretty cool stuff. Today we will make exactly the same, only bigger. To do this, we will need a lot of nuts. They're raw now. Therefore, we open them and scatter all the nuts on the baking sheets. Then we send this all into the oven. We will roast them at 200 degrees in convection mode. Thanks to this, the nuts will become many times more fragrant. After 20 minutes, we go and get them. Sometimes the hazelnut shell can be better, but I tried and everything's fine with these nuts and it's pointless to peel them. Therefore, for convenience, we simply pour them into bowls. Nutella also needs sugar, milk chocolate, cocoa, and salt. We collect 800 grams of nuts and pour them into a blender. Also add four tablespoons of milk chocolate, the same amount of sugar, two tablespoons of cocoa, and salt for balance. We cover everything up with a lid and install on the mixer. We crush the whole mass for 40 minutes until it turned into a paste. Now we transfer it to a custom made container. The blender wasn't good enough for a second portion of Nutella, and it broke. Therefore, we will have to change the cooking technology a little bit. We install a meat grinder into the mixer, pour nuts into the saucer, and grind them. And we meet through a really fine grid. Thus, we pass all the hazelnuts through it, and pour 800 grams of already crushed nuts into the melange. This includes sugar, chocolate, and salt. While we wait half an hour until it grinds all into a paste. We shift the Nutella into a mold and load the next portion. Later we made a double portion of once and brought the paste to such a super smooth consistency. We cooked Nutella all day until we filled out the form. Our paste is made. It remains to cook large sticks. We'll have to bake them in our big oven. But first we'll chop some wood and make a fire.
push the firewood into the oven and let it warm up. For the dough, pour three liters of 330 milliliters of water. There is also quite a lot of salt, sugar, and dry yeast. Pour one kilogram of flour and mix with a whisk until the dough becomes homogenous. We wait half an hour for the yeast to work and add four kilograms of flour. Knead the dough with a spatula. Pour in 300 milliliters of oil. And knead it with your hand. Now cover it up with film. Literally half an hour in the sun, and it has risen pretty good. We mince it a little bit. And again, covered up with the film. Do not forget to throw firewood so that the stove continues to heat up. The dough is ready. We tear off a part of it and put it on the scales. Each stick will weigh 850 grams. We dust the tip with the flour. Our dough is on it. We stretch it and spread it out with our hands. We turn it up and pinch it until we form such a long stick. We fold it three times. And with the help of a spatula, we transfer it to a huge baking sheet. We return the dough to its previous form. We make a fold on the parchment. And we prop it all up with a towel. Thus, we form five strips of dough. Meanwhile, the stove has warmed up pretty well. Break the coals to the sides. Inside the stove, we need to raise the humidity. Therefore, we fill up a balloon with water. Tighten the lid. And pump the air, creating pressure. And now we spray water evenly on the hot bricks from this spray gun. Dough sticks have already risen. They need to be stretched out on a baking sheet. We trim it a little bit with our hands. And push it into the oven. We close it with two lids. And after half an hour, we open it back up. The first batch of huge sticks with Nutella is ready. Let's make another one. In my opinion, the second batch turned out even more beautiful. An enlarged copy of the Nutella box was made to order for us. Shake the can of primer and cover the box with it. After that, we blow everything out with brown paint. We transfer the box to the studio. 
arm ourselves with acrylic paints, brushes, and rollers. Now we need white paint. We draw borders with a brush. And we make a white background with a roller. We draw the outline of the inscriptions with a pencil. And we decorate it off. Done. We insert our Nutella mold into the box. As well as the huge sticks. In my opinion, it turned out really great. Hey everybody, in the video we did with the huge bounty, I asked, which candy bar do you want me to blow up next? Most chose Twix. Well, let's cook the most gigantic Twix. First, let's see what's inside it. We open it up. Got it. And we see a layer of cookies, then caramel, and milk chocolate on the outside. Now let's go to the store. The first thing we need is condensed milk. More precisely, it is an unrealistically large amount of condensed milk. We need 215 cans. We also take a lot of powdered sugar. Six boxes. We need 55 kilograms of flour. Three boxes of margarine. Twelve bottles of eggs. And there are 20 eggs in each bottle. And of course, milk chocolate. That's it. With two fully filled carts, we go to the checkout. Our purchase came out to $574. It's not very cheap, but we're preparing a huge Twix. First, let's prepare the cookies for our Twix. We take 16 packs of margarine in a large saucepan. We open the margarine. And dump it into the saucepan. We filled it to the top. Just put that on the stove and wait until all the margarine melts and becomes liquid. To knead a lot of dough, we take a huge basin like this. You need 30 kilograms of flour. We open the packages with scissors. And pour out all the flour. Take the melted margarine off the stove and pour it out. We take the boxes of powdered sugar, open them, and one and a half boxes are sent into the basin. All we have left to do is add 120 eggs or six bottles of eggs. To mix all this up well, we use an industrial standing mixer. The dough is very thick, and your hands get tired from holding the mixer, but nevertheless, everything's ready. The Twix sticks will be made in these iron forms. First, pour a little oil inside. Smear it around on the walls. And cover that with parchment. Done. We lower the forms to the floor. We put the dough directly into the mold with our hands. We line everything up. 
And we've already filled out one form. Now you need to repeat the same thing with the second one. Done. We put the forms of the dough in our huge oven. We close the doors. And turn on the burners. Our cookies will be cooked all night at 190 degrees. We swapped the molds places during the night because the burners are cooking faster in spaces. As it seemed to us in the morning, everything's ready. We put a sheet of plywood on top and turn it over. But then the worst thing happened. It turns out our cookies were not baked at all all night. Of course, we were upset, but we did everything again. This time, the cookies were baked all day and all night. Naturally, during such a long cooking time, the top was burnt. But it's not a problem. With the help of knives, we remove the upper burnt layer. Done. The cookies are cleaned. The open part on top will be the bottom of the Twix. We take a small part of the chocolate that we bought. We take two bowls. And just crush the chocolates on the table. Open them. And pour out the shards into a bowl. We continue this until they fill the bowl with a heap. We put all this into a steam bath. And when the chocolate began to melt and decrease in volume, we realized that this wouldn't be enough. We take another batch of chocolate and fill a bigger bowl with it. And we also send that to the steam bath. We bring the molds into the studio. The first batch of chocolate is already melted. Pour two bowls on top of the cookies. And we distribute the chocolate. Pour a large bowl of chocolate into the second mold. And we distribute that. After a very long time, the chocolate finally set. We put a sheet of plywood on top and turn over the cookies for Twix. We remove the stuck parchment. And this time the cookies turned out to be just awesome. With the help of putty, Dad smears the inner corners of the mold so that it becomes more rounded. Then we cover everything with parchment. We transfer them to the studio, and the next stage begins. The caramel for the Twix. For the caramel, powdered sugar is needed. And just an unreal amount of condensed milk. We open the packages. Take out five cans. and open them. We will cook in two pans at once. We open 10 cans. Pour the condensed milk into the pans. Add a ladle of powdered sugar. and cook it all over medium heat until a brown caramel turns out. We send that into the mold. We will repeat this process a ridiculous number of times. We cooked the caramel and the condensed milk burned down very slowly. In total, we cooked the caramel for nine hours. 
We fill the caramel into the third of the molds. That should be enough. We line it up. Now the caramel has been in the freezer all night. We take it out, pull it out of the mold, and place it on top of the cookies. We remove all the stuck parchment from the caramel. Now we take all the chocolate that we bought and even found dark chocolate after the last videos. We put a hefty saucepan on the table and break all the chocolates right into it. Done. Now we take three smaller bowls and fill them with the chocolate pieces. We put them into a steam bath to melt. Done. The chocolate melted and became a liquid. Now let's pour this on top of the bar. We smear all this around the spatula so that the chocolate layer turns out to be even. We pour out all the melted chocolate. and fill the bowls with chocolate again. We melt it, and we try to fix all the blemishes on it. For the final filling, we add oil, and mix it well. Thanks to this, our chocolate will spread very beautifully and be glossy. Fill it in. Now we go around with a spatula, and with a spoon we make characteristic grooves on top. The second twig stick is also covered. And we make our grooves. When the chocolate is set, our giant Twix is ready. It weighs 220 kilograms. It took five days to prepare it, and there are 1,078,000 calories in it. That's crazy how much. Let's finally cut into it. 